You can now play as Blissey in Pokemon Unite. Instead of giving us what we all wanted with Blastoise, they gave us another pink round Pokemon that we can now play as, smacking people around. But is she good? That's what we're gonna find out today. In fact, we're gonna find out how good all the characters are. I'm gonna run through every character from worst to best, keeping in mind solo queue, keeping in mind high level masters play, and even 5v5 competitive play. I know a lot of you probably watched this just to understand the meta, understand what you should be playing, what you should be avoiding, that sort of thing. So let's get to it. So we gotta start somewhere and we're starting at the bottom at D tier. And we have one Pokemon in D tier and that is Garchomp. In fact, I'll go ahead and rename this Garchomp. And I apologize to all the Garchomp mains out there. I wish that I could put him higher, but I just can't. He just got a pretty big buff as well. His Dragon Rush now has a lower cooldown, which is great for the late game. But the problem with Garchomp is he has to scale into the late game and he's really weak in the early laning phases. And this buff doesn't help him with those major weaknesses. Today's meta evolves heavily over early game skirmishes versus Dreadnought and Rotom. If you're not able to be impactful and fight with your team and deal damage and all that, then you're not worth picking because Dreadnought is that important. Garchomp's pre-evolutions just can't handle that pace of the game. Now they did try to offset this weakness by buffing Bulldoze, which is actually it's a pretty big buff as well, but it still isn't enough to push him past other Pokemon up into rank C. Also, this should be B and this should be A. Anyways, let's move on to C tier. In this tier, we have two speedsters to start off with. Absol and Gengar, and I have Gengar lower. Ever since Gengar's nerfs, he's just felt so bad to play. In fact, I'm tempted to throw him down in D tier with Garchomp, um, but I think that might be a little too drastic. He still does damage. It's just not the insane overtuned damage that we saw on the release patch. And I still think Gengar is really fun to play and really good at pub stomping. If you're playing against new, new players, they don't know how to outplay him, how to dodge his abilities. It's pretty fun but I probably wouldn't pick him over any of the other speedsters, even Absol. Although I do think it would be fun if they gave him um, another buff to Shadow Ball Dream Eater. I think it could be really cool if that became a viable build for him. It could be really fun to play, so maybe we have that to look forward to. Now Absol is another speedster that's down here in C tier, and he got buffed last patch, but even with those buffs, um, he just seems lackluster compared to Zero Aura and Talonflame, which spoiler alert, are gonna be higher up on the list. And that's just comparing them to the other speedsters. Like when you compare him to other junglers, cause really that's what Absol is, he's really, really far down the totem pole. His abilities can do a lot of damage, a lot of burst damage, but, but I think his combos are predictable and punishable. Also in C tier, we have Pikachu and we have Slowbro. Pikachu is a decent character, especially if you're learning the game, but compared to the other attackers and other damage dealers, I just wouldn't find myself picking Pikachu over them. But like I mentioned in my last tier list video, Pikachu is a great character to learn the game. He does decent damage, he has decent CC, and his ultimate is, is can be decently impactful. So it's a great character to learn the game on, but once you play a bit with Pikachu, you're gonna learn um, the playstyle that you like, and you're gonna be able to pick a different character that specializes in one of those areas and just does a better job. We also have Slowbro down here in C tier, and it's kind of sad. I used to have him in A tier, which I think was potentially higher than a lot of other people have him. I think his Surf was an incredible move with a lot of CC and they just nerfed it. And I don't want to over exaggerate the nerfs, but I think it's safe to say he is in C tier because I could have seen him having a buff, but they decided to nerf him instead. Like I said, Surf was his bread and butter, and now the entire knockup duration for Surf Plus is down two seconds in the late game, I think, and that just feels terrible. Of course, they decided to buff Scald, so that maybe you're enticed to pick Scald over Surf, but don't do that. I would not do that. Surf is so good compared to Scald, even with the nerfs to it. I definitely had Slowbro higher than Krustl in the past, and I think they flopped this time around. Let's move on to B tier, starting off with Gardevoir. Compared to other attackers, she's sort of fallen down the list, and the reason why is she's kind of similar to Garchomp in that she needs to scale up into the late game, but to me, she's a lot more consistent than he is. If you know how to position with her and how to utilize her cooldowns and utilize her ultimate especially, she can be super impactful in the late game. But similar to Pikachu, there's other 
characters I would pick over her if I wanted a damage dealer or a special attacker in lane. Moving on to our next duo. This is a fire type duo of Charizard and Talonflame. These guys are both right next to each other in B tier. So I think Charizard is doing a lot better than he was a few weeks ago, but he's still in the bottom half of all rounders. His damage is extremely ult dependent. He does a lot of damage during his ult, but if you don't have it up um, or you're just saving it for a certain fight, then you're not gonna be as impactful leading up to that fight. I think he might just need a couple more buffs or maybe a meta shift um, before we see him being like a very common, powerful pick. Talonflame is also in B tier, and I think a few weeks ago I had this guy even below Garchomp, so he has gotten some strength over the past few weeks. Part of that is due to an extremely strong combo with Brave Bird and Aerial Ace where you can reset. Problem is, once he does that combo, he has no way to get out, and so he suffers from being too much of a diver. But he's kind of like Gengar in that he's really good at pub stomping. If you start a, if you start a new account and you want to level up fast, just pick Town Flame and run around diving onto people and killing them. The problem with higher level of play is I think he's an extremely weak laner. So you want him in the, in the jungle and there are just so many other characters that you'd rather pick in the jungle. But when you have other characters like Cinderace, Greninja, Zeraora, why would you pick him in the jungle? You want those other guys in the jungle, so there's really no sp no space for Talonflame on your team. Next up, we have Crustle. He's in the B tier slot for defenders. We just got some buffs for Crustle, which is pretty cool, but they were buffs on his moves that are rarely taken. So he got a buff on uh, Stealth Rock, and he got a buff on Rock Tomb. And those aren't typically the moves you take on him, but I know a lot of players are testing them out. A lot of even top 5v5 teams are kind of trying out the new build and so we might see his standard moveset shift some but it's unclear because his old moveset where you just speed up and x scissor their whole team was was pretty good so I'm curious to see where these new moves land in terms of priority for Krustle. Overall decent character but I still wouldn't pick him over Snorlax if I'm looking for a defender on my team. Moving on to A tier let's kick things off with Mr. Mime. I think people have been sleeping on Mr. Mime since day one of Pokemon Unite and I don't think he's as complicated to play as people think. He does crazy damage, especially early game, and he has incredible control of the enemy with his barriers. He can be a nuisance. And I think his full damage build with Psychic and Guard Swap is actually extremely underrated. I think, I think it's super fun to play and more people should pick it up and try it out. If you haven't tried Mr. Mime, I highly recommend it. He's really fun to play. Next is another super fun character to play, and that's Machamp. I think people kind of misread Machamp as well. They see him as just a melee bruiser that runs in and punches people, but, but I don't think people realize just how much Machamp excels in team fights. Obviously with his submission, you can run in and CC a priority target and your team can jump on them and delete them. But his moves do surprising AOE damage, especially his ultimate. I mean, if you have the right follow-up and coordination with your team and you land that ultimate with Machamp on four to five players, it is an amazing feeling just shredding them and then you get to run him down chase him down after that so yeah i think machamp is really good i don't think he is higher than a tier because he's sometimes forgettable because you don't like it's not like you need to pick machamp in every single one of your games to succeed whereas many of the pokemon that i have in s and s plus they're like that you really just want them in every game and machamp just isn't to that point yet but he's still a really solid character Next up in A tier, we have two ranged special attackers with Venusaur and Alola Ninetales. I think Venusaur is really good right now and really slept on. He provides a lot for your team while sort of flying under the radar. A lot of 5v5 Masters teams are starting to pick him up for late game objective control. His Solar Beam has always been a great executability and combined with his passive, you know, the lower you are in health, the more damage your abilities do. He has the ability to really secure late game objectives like Dreadnought and Zapdos. He always felt a little lackluster on the release patch, but now he has more cooldown on that Solar Beam early game. So you can show up to those early skirmish over the first Dreadnought and be more prepared to secure it. His ultimate is also way better than it used to be. It used to not really do much damage at all and now uh, you feel it more. It's definitely more impactful. Let's talk about Ninetales now. She's gone down in my rankings a little bit. I used to have her in S tier and it's not because she's suddenly become bad or anything. I think she's still a really great character. One of the best character designs in the whole game. But other attackers like Venusaur that we just mentioned and also Cramorant have become 
really staple like AOE slash zoning damage dealers. And that's sort of what Ninetales was utilized for uh, a few weeks ago. And so now she has some other Pokemon that kind of rival her for that position. But with that being said, I still think she's a unique character. She's not replaced by Cramorant or Venusaur at all. That's partially because I think Aurora Veil is an incredible ability, one of the best in the game. And if you're a Ninetales fan, keep playing her. She's really good and a really, really good Ninetales player can make or break a team. But overall, I just, I don't have her in S tier because a few weeks ago she was in every single game, which is why she was up in the S tiers. But now she's just solid, solid A tier character. If I see her reverting back to the state she was a couple weeks ago where she was picked in every single team all day long, then I think she would deserve to hop back up into S tier. But right now she's sitting healthy in A tier along with Venusaur. Next we have Zero Aura, and he's going to be right here in front of Ninetales. He's the strongest speedster in the game, he's incredibly fun to play and does a ton of damage, especially uh, with his AoE ability Discharge. He has mobility, he can get in and out of team fights, and all of that combined make him a great assassin type character. Previously I had him in S plus tier before his Unite move nerfs, but he's still really good, he just does less broken damage now. He's not picked all that often in like a 5v5 competitive setting. He's just not the jungler of choice right now, but he's incredibly good in solo queue. If you like Zero Aura, then go for it. You can you can carry yourself to Masters with Zero Aura for sure. I think he's a great Pokemon to climb the ranks with. So we've made it up to S tier, so let's kick it off with Cramorant. Cramorant has been rising up the ranks with a lot of damage, special attack type players picking him up instead of Ninetales. And he kind of fills the role of like an AoE crowd controller that Ninetales had before. Where Cramorant really shines is objective control. He's incredible at zoning the enemy off Dreadnought when you're trying to take it, or throwing his stuff on Dreadnought itself, adding to the DPS and shredding it down. Definitely a good character, um, definitely slept on during the first month of the game, but now sort of getting his chance in the spotlight, especially in competitive matches, he's being picked every game. So now we have a duo of supporters, and this is probably what a lot of you guys were waiting for. We're going to talk about Blissey and Eldegoss. So I actually have Blissey first and then Eldegoss right above her. And honestly, I didn't expect it to be this close when Blissey was released. I thought she was going to be good, but I didn't think she could match up with Eldegoss. But she has a couple of pretty incredible abilities that make her really good. First up is Soft Boiled. The, this is the one where you throw an egg and heal them and you have up to four charges in the late game of heals And because of this, Blissey does a lot more healing than Eldegoss And because of this, you should pretty much always be running Soft Boiled uh, over Egg Bomb Egg Bomb is super fun and it has some CC and some damage But if you like that type of playstyle, uh, running in and disrupting with some damage on a tanky character Then just play a defender Really where Blissey is S tier is if you're running that heal build The healing is definitely the way to go if you want to use her at her best I think she's best in that supportive role and uh, Soft Boiled is the way to go if you want to be using her at her best. But the reason why she's this high is not even because of that, it's because of Helping Hand. This move is incredibly good. It boosts your team's attack speed, it makes your team run faster, you can rotate to objectives quicker. It's honestly like a little broken, it's incredible. If you run with your whole team to Dreadnought, drop Helping Hand, um, and let's say you have Ninetales drop Aurora Veil as well, or maybe you have a Fluffy Tail, you can seriously melt Dreadnought in under two seconds with your entire team, which is crazy. And on top of that, Helping Hand is not bad for Blissey herself. It's sort of like a Snorlax Flail, but your whole team gets the buffs as well, so it's, it's really fun to use and really good. And I didn't even mention Blissey's Ultimate. Blissey's Ultimate is really good too. Um, and if you can line it up just right to where your carry or whoever you're trying to heal is at the opposite side of your enemies, you just run through and knock them all up. Uh, really impactful. But with all that praise for Blissey, Eldegoss is also incredibly good. I still have Eldegoss just a hair above, a solid supporting character with an amazing ultimate. And I mentioned before that Blissey does more healing than Eldegoss, but if you account for all the shields that Eldegoss gives your team, which are not tracked, I think you end up with more effective health um, and healing given to your team. Eldegoss also does a surprising amount of damage. Her being a ranged character gives her the edge over Blissey. If you're properly pressuring in lane, poking them with your auto attacks, then you're getting a lot of value out of the character. And a lot of Eldegoss one tricks run muscle band on her because of how like low key impactful her auto attacks are during a team fight. You're just sitting there tossing them out while healing and shielding and all this kind of stuff at the same time. Really good character with a game-changing ultimate, I think. 
now let's talk about our two AD carry junglers. We have Cinderace, and right above them we have Greninja. Both these characters are some of my favorites to play. And with Cinderace, I think the community as a whole is overhyping his nerfs. Before them, he was incredibly strong, incredibly uh, broken and overpowered. But now I think he's just in a really healthy spot. He still does a ton of damage. He still has Faint, which is still probably the best ability in the whole game. And even though people have kind of pretty much completely replaced him with Greninja, I think I still think he's up there with them neck and neck, and they both are incredible AD carries. But speaking of Greninja, he is really solid. I almost have him in S plus tier. But like I mentioned, I don't think the gap between Greninja and Cinderace is as big as people perceive it to be. But just like Cinderace, he has a lot of damage and he has mobility and tools to escape in situations where he needs to. Now we just saw some nerf to Smokescreen, which is his dash of choice for sure over Double Team. But the nerfs aren't horrible. Your cooldown went from 11 seconds to 13 seconds. So now you just have two, two additional seconds that you need to play around, which I think I think that's a good way to balance him and add some more counterplay. And even though they did buff Double Team, I still think players are gonna be taking Smokescreen over Double Team pretty much every single time. What's more interesting is he got a pretty incredible buff to Water Shuriken. Its cooldown is now 5 seconds, and when you combine that with his ability to lower his ability cooldowns with auto attacks, the Water Shurikens come out rapid fire at the late game. But even despite that, I think you take Surf every game. Surf is so good. If you know what you're doing with the Greninja, the potential with the resets are incredible. I think you still take it over Water Shuriken every single time. If you know what you're doing, if you know how to position, if you know how to make use of those executions, you can take command of team fights with Surf, get those resets, and make a difference for your team. And I think that's what really sets Greninja apart is in terms of his mechanical skill. And even though Water Shuriken has kind of bonkers potential late game, Surf is just so good in the early to mid game, and that's really what matters in the current meta. So now there's three Pokemon left, and they're all S+. We have Lucario at the number one spot, followed by Snorlax, followed by Wigglytuff. So let's start with Wigglytuff. Before the Blissey patch, I actually had her a little lower, because I think a lot of people were overhyping Wigglytuff. But I don't really blame them because she is incredibly good. She's incredibly disruptive and annoying, and she's basically a frontliner. She runs in, she slaps them around, she CCs everybody. And a lot of that is thanks to her passive ability and her uh, empowered auto attacks. They're incredibly annoying and really, really good. But I still have her under Snorlax because I don't think that she's strong enough to replace Snorlax as a frontliner. You're still going to want Snorlax in all of your games. She's still more of a support slash tank rather than a pure hyper tank the way Snorlax is. But she's still incredibly good. A lot of top teams are picking her. A lot of top players in solo queue are picking her. A lot of Lucario players are actually picking her instead of Lucario in competitive play because she sort of provides the skirmish ability and early laning prowess that Lucario gives you. That's not to say they are interchangeable characters, but it just shows how much people value her as a pick right now in the meta. So let's talk Snorlax. He just received some pretty big nerfs, but he's still the best defender despite those nerfs. And I still think you want to consider running him on every single team, which is why he's an S+. But let's talk about those nerfs a little bit. So his block got hit pretty hard. Beforehand, block was just incredibly annoying zoning tool. You push up against people, you just perma stun lock them out of the fight. And now I believe it has lost about half a second off the stun, which is pretty big. And now you're definitely able to pass through his wall if you time it right, which honestly is good. He was so overbearing and overpowered before that they needed to hit him with something. They also nerfed the damage on Heavy Slam, which I think is wise. He doesn't need that much damage on Heavy Slam, he's a tank. And that damage nerf affects his early game a lot more than his late game, which is fine. For being such a late game frontline threat, his early game was so strong, and it still is. He still is really good, but they have toned it back a bit, which was needed. And now for the top dog, Lucario. I think with those Snorlax nerfs, Lucario has now solidified himself as the number one Pokemon in the game. He's received essentially no nerfs since the game's release other than a couple of bug fixes. He's just an incredible early laner that can snowball into the mid game and late game really well. I think he's the perfect definition of an all rounder. He has the damage, he has the mobility, he has survivability with his passive ability. He's an incredible laner with uh, extremely threatening early game and he has the ability to snowball that lead into the mid game. 
and into the late game where he's extremely impactful. His higher up punch is a great execute to secure kills, but more importantly, to secure objectives like Zapdos. He also has 1v1 dueling potential in the late game, um, so that could make him a great split pusher, for example, if that was a stronger part of the meta right now. But in the current meta, it's a lot more about 5v5 team fights and rotations, but the split push aspect actually comes into the game a little bit, because something that's really valuable right now is the ability to solo defend a back cap in the late games. So in the last few minutes of the game, people throwing in their last few points, Lucario can just sit there and duel someone and make sure they never get the ability to score. Even small details like that make Lucario great. I think one of the only downfalls for Lucario is his ultimate is a little lackluster, but because of all these other things where he's clearly outstandingly good, um, it's okay to not have an overpowered ultimate. All right, so there's the tier list. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you think Blissey is a lot stronger than Eldegoss and I was wrong, or maybe I'm overvaluing her and she's not exactly S tier for you. So let me know what you think. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Also check out the merch. I have some Pokemon inspired merch that I made myself. So check it out. I'll leave a link below. Thanks again for watching and good luck becoming a Pokemon master.